Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to meet with you again and give you a bit of an update on the, the superintendent search. Uh, we're thrilled with the level of engagement that we've had from individual board members and from the collective board as a whole. Uh, you guys have been uh, available, um, probably too much in, in, in your estimation, but you've been great and responsive and flexible and nimble and be able to meet with us and give us open and honest feedback and helping us shape a process and begin to shape an engagement process that will allow for free and open communication where we could really get the values and ideals of the board individually and collectively as well as your community uh, in, in finding the traits and characteristics and, and, and wants and needs in your next superintendent. Uh, we've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with each board member repeatedly, almost daily, um, getting different feedback on process and, and protocols and, and stakeholders and community groups and, and, and different types of activities we could get out in the community and begin tomorrow with to hear from the community and the different aspects or, or components of the community to try to define what a great superintendent candidate would be here. Um, it's, it's our goal tonight to, to announce formally that we're starting stakeholder engagement tomorrow night uh, on your search website. Um, you have updated all the information on community gatherings, small focus group meetings, very targeted specific conversations that Dale, one of the gentlemen in the back, and, and the team are going to lead for us. And over the next three weeks, we're going to meet with uh, large group forums, small community meetings, organizational meetings, and different aspects of your community to hear what each individual group, individual, and organization um, want in their next superintendent. And for those people who are going to be invited um, specifically, or those folks on a district by district basis will be invited to a, a community forum in a district by district basis. For those people who are overscheduled and overburdened like many of us are, there will also be an electronic tool available for stakeholders to get involved in the process as well. Uh, it's, a, it's a very structured event. Uh, we sent you the, the daily schedule or agenda for each of those events, and we want to encourage board members to attend those. Welcome your community members. Invite them to be for a, a free and open dialogue about the traits and characteristics of the district and the next superintendent needs, and really engage with our folks so we could create an accurate position profile. One of the things we've had great discussion about outside of stakeholder engagement is the transparency of the process, and I think that's critical. I heard the word transparency used a lot in your earlier conversations, and, and it's something we, we truly value. Um, what we've done in working with each board member independently in the, in the collective whole is work with the board to create the concept of a community liaison group, and that's one of the things I'm going to need some guidance from the Board of Education on tonight. There's a couple things, but this is one. Um, we've had conversations with board members where uh, a, a liaison group would be representative of the greater community and get them more involved in the, in the superintendent search process with us as a partner and with the Board of Education as a partner. And what we've come to as a recommendation, which was included in your board packets, was a, a structure that allowed a community liaison group to play a primary role in vetting candidates and recruiting and marketing candidates, and then turning the top candidates over to the Board of Education for a couple rounds of interviews uh, for them to vet and select the finalist candidate for the superintendency. What we hope to do is find a compromise solution to satisfy the needs of the community and the needs of the Board of Education by giving everybody in the community representation and involvement in an inclusive and transparent process in selecting your next superintendent. Uh, people ask us how we gauge our success in finding a superintendent. And the true answer is we don't know until they're there a couple years. Um, ideally, we'd like to know right off the bat that a good fit is a good fit, but the fact of the matter is we have to wait and see how the, 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 the superintendent pans out in the community and performance and operational inefficiencies are in a district. So that's the true test. But in terms of selection of a candidate, there's the, the process by which you select the candidate is critically important because you have to have buy-in and support for the vastness of your school system. And what we created or have recommended to the Board of Education is a liaison group that sits in partnership with the Board of Education, in partnership with ProX Search, in partnership with the different interests in your community to help us best identify talent in the district and then ultimately turn it over to the full Board of Education to do two serious and intensive rounds of interviews with superintendent candidates and so the Board of Education can make the ultimate decision in your next superintendent. That's one of the concepts we wanted to put out there. Secondly, the Board of Education members individual have been asked to recommend a district representative as well as at-large representatives for the liaison committee. It's our goal to have seven district members and, and as identified by Board of Education members as well as six to eight community at-large members to serve in the liaison group with the chairman of the Board of Education, with the vice chairman of the Board of Education and have this 14 to 16 member group 
work with us and work with the Board of Education to make sure we get top level candidates from all walks of life for consideration for your next superintendency. So while stakeholder engagement will be vast and fast and furious throughout the next three weeks, there are two asks we have of the Board of Education tonight. One is to approve conceptually the community liaison group. That's a blend of district-wide representation as identified by individual board members and then at large members that come from recommendations made by individual board members. What I hope to leave with tonight is agreement with the spirit and concept and design of the liaison group. What I hope to get from you by the end of the week after providing feedback to your board leadership is the at large members so that we can engage this group for a first time on March 2nd. It's our hope to, to work with the liaison group as well as the Board of Education and community at large in this inclusive, transparent process that brings top talent to the district. My, my, my primary ask, I would hope that you all turn to the, the, the handout we have provided to the Board of Education that has on the, the top of it the DeKalb County Superintendent Search Community Liaison Group. The, and the specific recommendation that you were asking uh, us to approve. I, I think, again, to have a process that has, has mutual support or, or individual as well as collective support of the totality of the board is critically important. And we think this document captures that. And it's a, a, a compromise idea that allows for district involvement at large and uh, holistic community involvement while still giving the Board of Education their, their delegated right to identify semi-finalist and finalist candidates for, for full consideration for the superintendency. Is there any discussion? I have a question. Uh, yes. um, help me to better, Mr. Solomon, better understand this liaison group, and I know that word has been thrown around sort of loosely in the past. The role of this group, my understanding from what I'm hearing you saying, that this group would actually go through the applicants and then they would make a decision as to who would be the ones that would push forward and these would be people from the community. And what we, what we tried to do is capture a large enough subset of candidates for the board for full consideration. So we'd bring a far greater number of candidates to the committee for consideration or the liaison but group. But you're not asking the question, is the liaison group going to be the one who would, the one that would actually vet these people go through the applications and make the decision as to who will be pushed forward to the board. Yeah, I think we do that in partnership with them, yeah. I think what we, what we would do is work with them. We would ultimately bring the recommendations to you based upon dialogue and feedback from the group. And so I go back to my same question before, and I have no problem, as I said, the word transparency being loosely thrown about, and you and I have talked about this and I've asked this question several times, then my understanding, I still keep asking the question, that why do we have a search firm if we're going to engage other people to be able to actually make these decisions? I still have a, a, a difficulty being able to accept the fact that we have people who are in positions that may be applicants and that their jobs could be in jeopardy. Confidentiality, integrity, and all of that is in there. So so having that same stance, it seems as if this is the direction that we're going in, that we would have this group of people that would actually be making this decision along with you all. And again, I ask the question, why do we have a search firm if this is the way it's going to be? Sorry. I think decision is per perhaps too strong a word. It's our goal to, to get their best thinking and, and best discussion on the matter, and then we would bring those candidates to the full Board of Education. One of the things that I've, I've gained from each board member that I talk to individually and then collectively is how critically important it is for the Board of Education to get a, a, an ample intersection of talent for consideration for your superintendency. And I think ultimately if our goal is to get uh, top talent to apply to the district to see the process through and give the board an opportunity to have a rich discussion with people on a couple different levels, I think we'll still we'll, we'll achieve that with this process. Mr. Orson? Yeah, just a couple quick more housekeeping. I know um, looking at the bottom of the group, and I know and maybe these numbers aren't rigid. You had discussed, I mean, there have been variations about whether it be 13 or 14. We're not locked in at all. These okay. are placeholder numbers. What, what okay, I want to do, and, and, and just so you know, one of the documents that we have, we over, have over 70 people already, and it was 72 when I sat down here, 72 people who have already expressed interest in the superintendent position, which is fantastic. I mean, James is texting people right now who are right now expressing interest in the position. So there's great, great, great um, dialogue nationwide about this superintendency. So I'm not married to a number. I want to get a broader number 
and to a lesser number, yet allow for rich discussion and debate among so, the board. So I guess my the, the more substantive question is, do you feel about from the submissions that have been made by each of us that you have, in your professional opinion, mm -hmm. the return record? Remember my lawyer days to ask the very specific question. I'm, I'm gladly giving you an unprofessional right. opinion as well. There you go. <laughs> well, we'll try both. We'll see right. if they uh, comport. That do you feel comfortable that you've, you're getting a broad cross section of the community from which you could come back if if we go in that direction? That would be give you a substantially wide vision representative. For the representative representative and and voice basically to the community. You know, and and we've had great discussions with folks in in great detail, and and I'm I'm pleased a, a thousand percent pleased with the depth and quality of the discussions that we've had and the thoughtfulness that people have given. I know that some people were, were a little late and tardy in getting us information, which is fine because that, that, that's thoughtfulness. And you keep getting back to us on a rolling basis, which is great, because the more discussion we have, the better. So one of the things that we talked about from the first time I was here of the different type of groups and individuals and organizations that were critical, higher education, commerce, um, faith-based, community-based, um, parent-based, student-based, those types of, those types of interests in your community that represent the education community at large. I, I'm very pleased with the, the district selections or nominations that people made. And by the way, everybody who was nominated by a board member gladly accepted in, in real time. I mean, instantaneously when they asked them to, to be more involved in the process, they, they jumped at the opportunity. And I think the at-large members, I think after some one-on-one -on -one discussion among board members um, led by board leadership, I think we could come to a good representative group that will be um, diverse in their thinking and diverse in how they look at the superintendency. And I think that's important because, again, you may not agree or disagree with one ideology, but to get many out there to debate is, is part of a, a rich process. Chair, Mr. Chair, excuse me. Mrs. Turner. Um, Mr. Solomon, I just want to be, uh, for clarity's sake, initially, and uh, I was just an observant uh, to the meeting in December, but it was my understanding that um, that PROAC would vet the candidates and bring the larger base to the board. And um, we would be more involved in that process. I think from the beginning, from the board members that I've spoken to, I think that we all want the community involved. I think the liaison group, I have no problem with that. But my understanding was that the vetting of those candidates, that the interviewing of those candidates, not only would you have a liaison committee involved, but the board would be involved. Not in the final three, but the board would be involved on the larger scale. And so when that shifted and changed, I'm still a little fuzzy about that. On why did we remove that responsibility from the board, which I gladly I don't know if I speak on behalf of everybody else. I gladly want to be involved in that because I think that's part of the reason that my constituents voted me in, they, to represent their voice. And so I don't want to lose that opportunity to be involved in the larger picture and only at the end at three candidates. So I don't, I don't think the, the, the pool that you'll see at the end is any lesser. Mm -hmm. um, it'll just, they'll be, the, the, the liaison group will be involved at a more broad level, mm -hmm. getting down, but it, but it won't be a lesser dialogue, because I think it's critical, as I've said, to get into a rich debate among board members and, and a couple different instances. So it won't lessen your involvement with candidates at all. Um, one of the things that, and, and when we first met at the, the first meeting that you were in the audience, uh, we were talking about a process absent of any discussion with board members collectively or individually. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think the document that you see in front of you is representative of, of the, the collective thinking of the board mm -hmm. and, and will get the type of buy-in and support from candidates as well as the community and the Board of Education that ultimately will lead to consensus in selecting your next superintendent. Because what I want to do and what I'm careful about doing, somewhere, sometimes perhaps too much, is, is creating a process that has some, some, some give and take for everybody because ultimately that's what you're going to have to do with your candidates at the end. In a perfect world, you're going to have three finalists that everybody loves equally, but that doesn't usually come out. You know, there's some people who want this and some people who want that, but to have an open debate with a rich process that people were, their, their thoughts were representative, represented in leads to a better discussion of candidates at the end. Because if, if somebody's ideas were shunned as part of the process, and it wasn't a, a compromise and a little bit of give and take. You see less give and take at the end when you're talking about the, the, the characteristics and individuals who have those characteristics. Another, thank you. 
Uh, another uh, question I had was um, uh, selecting or seeking out uh, faith-based involvement. Now, on the at-large group here that has been identified, I think I only saw, and I'm sure those were on the recommendations of mm -hmm. the board, just one um, uh, pastor on here. Are you still seeking involvement? Because I've gotten some emails with some rabbis in the community that were suggested, and I don't see if them. If you on. get rolling information that comes in, and we have this conversation all the time, if you have rolling information, please get it to us. Okay. We'll, we'll never turn a blind eye because you missed a deadline, okay. and we'll discuss applicant deadline as a hard deadline maybe later on. Uh -huh. But if you have people who step up and want to be involved, yes, please, please get that information to us. And I could even call you in the morning, and we could talk about that independently. Good, good. And one last thing, there is a correction that needs to take place on um, one of the candidates uh, for representing dis my district okay. uh, for, I think you've got them mixed up with another candidate. I will call you in the morning. We'll talk Thank about you. that as well. Okay. And there was also a mix-up with the uh, logo, um, with the, the, the school system versus the school district that on our website we remedied. So I apologize for that. Okay. Just some uh, clarity. So let's say we started with 75 candidates, and I, uh, Ms. Turner and uh, Dr. Morley were um, asking questions about this. If you start with 75 candidates, who is going to whittle that down to, let's say, 50? Uh, we will. We will bring. Can, so I give you, the, can I give you benchmark numbers and work backwards? Go ahead. So I imagine we'll get, say, 100 ish for argument's sake. We hope to bring the top third in terms of quality of candidates to the committee. And again, we're not locked in if it's a little more than that or a little less than that. My goal is to get to the Board of Education the top 9 to 12 candidates for consideration overall in any search that we do. And I think if, if there's that many candidates, it's probably a little bigger than some firms do, but I think each individual has something that will be representative of what the board is thinking, so I want to have that engagement. So think 100 to a third going to the greater uh, group, and then the top 9 to 12 to you to consider for full consideration. Okay, and I guess that might answer my second question. So once you get to, you know, 133.3, you're going to then bring in the liaison group? Yes. And then they will vet the candidates down to with us. With uh, and, you. And, and then let me be clear: what we've talked about is a very collaborative and, and iterative process. Well, vetting that. is just a word that we're sure. throwing out there right now. But sure. you would bring them in at about thirty candidates, and then that would be whittled down to ten. Nine to twelve. Nine to twelve, and then those nine to twelve will be turned over to the full board. Full board of education, along with Proact. Correct. Along okay, with Proact. So I don't understand that question. Well, there's a point in my mind that the community liaison group is involved, and then there's a point where it's just the board and PROACT that are involved. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we will bring the candidates f that we think are the top 9 to 12 based upon all that feedback to you. Okay, so then does the liaison group dissolve? No, they will be involved in the back end also with finalists. As well, we talked talked and, and I think that's what I need to know. What is the back end? Uh, what, what, very... I, what we have historically done is create a full day of interviews per candidate where they meet one-on-one -on -one with the Board of Education at large, and then we set up various stakeholder activities throughout the day, school visits, community um, uh, forums and interviews where we make the candidates available to the greater community as well. So then there's no conflict with confidentiality as far as them not wanting people to know that they're applying for this position? In terms of the finalists? Or well, the top ten. Maybe the top ten don't want everybody to know. You know, we've talked about that with potential candidates already before we made this recommendation. And they've been clear as long as we let them know what confidentiality guidelines are for the search on the front end of it and they don't waver throughout, that we've, we've gotten comfort with, with real good candidates to date. Okay, so, and I guess I'm, I'm going to keep hitting at this, 10 or 12 candidates, the liaison group is still part of the process, the full board is part of the process. But what information is the liaison group going to pass on to the board? Because eventually it's just going to be a board decision. Yes. So what information is the liaison group going to pass on to the board when dealing with these 10 to 12 candidates? I think just them getting there will represent the, the, the group's thinking and recommendations in terms of the people who are best fit for the school system and then leave it up to the full board to make that determination. So they're going to provide a ranking? I don't know that a ranking, but a, a grouping. So if you take the 30 and they'll get it done to 12, they'll th these... 12 are the best fit. Okay, so then after they do the ranking or the best 12 that fit into no. what we want, will that group then dissolve? No, they'll be involved as a, a part of a day, a day long of interviewing per candidate. I, I, I understand that day long interview, but my thing is eventually the board is going to make the decision. Yes, so there the, will be no liaison group that's part of it anymore. In terms of making a decision? Yes. The, I don't know, I don't see the liaison group as a decision making group, period. That, that's what I'm trying to. Right. Tweet, uh, tweeze out here. 
at some point, it is going to be a board process. Ultimately, the, the last two rounds. So when been, does the liaison group step back is my question. I guess to make it very clear, when do they step back? You know, I think the community searches around the country. When they're done best, the community is involved at the, at the end, the very end. And then the board gets together with us and we sit down in a room and say, okay, here's the, the feedback we have as individual board members. Here's the feedback we have collectively as a board. Here's what we heard from our community who we represent. And here's our thinking as a board. And I, okay. And, and I guess we can go back and forth because I'm, I'm still not getting the answer that I'm looking for. At some point, this information is going to come from the liaison group. It's going to be given to PROACT and the board. Yes. What would be the role of the liaison group after that? They've already done their day of interviewing. They, oh, they're the taking people around. At the, at the day of interview, after the, the finalist interviews in the community, it's, it, that, everything goes back to the board. We get together that, and get in a what, room and close the door and hand it out. That's what I'm talking about. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry if I wasn't that, teased appropriately. We got it out now. Everybody Thank knows. You. Can you repeat it so I make sure I got it? <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, it's a board decision, semifinalists and finalists. So are you saying, uh, Mr. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got more, more but, statements. Are you overheaded? I'm sorry. Oh, not a problem. Uh, just a couple of quick questions, because I think there's one issue that I thought we were still sort of thinking about, which was whether we reduce the pool to three finalists or sole finalists. So that, Based that, upon board decision, right, right, right. So, right. I, so, I, and I know we're just being, you know, we're just sort of blue skying to a certain extent. But sure. I want to be careful that because I don't know that we've made that decision as a board yet as to whether I, I get that, and I think this answers, and I think my understanding comports with where I think you wanted to go, which was that the community liaison group their their function would be between the thirty and the twelve. Sure, basically. And whatever else we have them do, it's really rests in our hands. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a related decision that you sort of hinted at that I don't know that we've come to a conclusion. And I think this goes to, I have these confidentiality concerns that I've shared with you that I would prefer we go to a process that as a board that we're responsible for getting down to a sole finalist so that we don't find ourselves in a situation. And so I just want to be clear because I don't think we've made a decision on that issue. I don't know that we have to make a decision, but I am concerned about where this will fit at some point you're going to need to know so you can communicate to candidates maybe it's at the point when you get to the 12 that by then we will have had to make a decision as to whether we're going to a sole finalist or three semi-finalists so that they will have their expectations set state law has has language around that we could do i, I believe up to three but it, it, it's up to the board the, right be holding on the board right. and the state requires us to, i think have a 14-day kind of mm -hmm. public comment period but we can reduce to a sole sure. finalist and i just think we should i would feel comfortable at least reserving that decision to your point and also being clear that once you and the liaison committee have done their stuff to deliver to us you're just helping us think through the process and it's i think the well, dr well, Irwin's point that we're going to have to make the decision it will it will so, also depend on if you get a really good candidate who says yeah, i'm not willing to go to be three that's part of the the board decision also if you want to say okay we're going to go to one that's a board decision but it's the information we'll bring forward mr chairman um, I, I'm going back, and I agree with Ms. Turner because this is surely topsy-turvy from that December night, and I was there. And um, as I said, I think it's essential, the, the community forums, uh, the, the uh, focus groups, that's essential so you can get an idea of what the community is looking for. I still think that this thing has taken another direction, and I've asked you three times, and I asked you with your VP back on January 5th, how do you handle the political wrangling, the arm bending, your elbow behind your back from all the people that you didn't get, which was happening, and handling this, and you've never answered that question. And so what I hear is the same thing that went, took place in Atlanta, which you all were part of that, is where you got down to, and this group decided we want one, and when, you, when PROAC was saying there will be three, I do still have a problem with the board relinquishes its responsibility in order to have a group from the community, because every, everything is, you know, personal. You know, if I have somebody I want, I'm going to go for who I want. But does it mean that it's the best? I still have a problem with the fact that we can call a liaison, you've called it committee, you can call it whatever you want to call it. But to me, there is a real uh, uh, problem when the board takes its responsibility and hires a firm, and then that firm comes back and doesn't seem to be able to handle it by itself, where they have to have a liaison group out there with them in order to dwindle down to 
chapter 30, I don't care if it's 39 or whomever. By the time it gets there, and I do agree that by the time we get there, the community needs to know who these people are. But I still say that you have moved totally away from what was given to us back in December and the fact that we have people on the outside that are going to make this decision, you say, along with us. And I still say again that if we needed to do that, we could have hired a liaison group or just had a liaison group come in, vet, and go through the applications and bring us 30 and bring us nine. We didn't need a, law, a, need a, a search firm. And so I, I think that we have to begin to look at that. And as I said, that question was never answered because it is political wrangling. Everybody has who they want. Somebody has there. I've gotten calls. I've gotten emails. I've gotten texts and all of that. That is not up to us to be out there swaying. So we start swaying the decision, and there will be a decision that will be made. And I think we have to be true to that. You can use semantics. Use whatever you want. There's still a process to me, that is following along with Atlanta. We know the politics and everything else that was played there, and it's played in most places. I think that we have to get down to the nuts and barrel. Who would be the best representation of this district and for the children and the families in this community, and not based on someone that somebody likes or wants, and so they can have a part in bringing that person in? Because I know that's what it seems like it is. Mrs. Turner. Um, Mr. Solomon, I just want, uh, just trying to get some clarification based on the dialogue between you and Dr. Irwin. The liaison group, at the point that we're down to, for the sake of example, 10 candidates, the top 10, they are dismantled, they are no longer involved, or will they come and be a part of this panel? It is, it, it is our practice okay. to invite community members to be part of what are deemed finalist interviews. Okay. And so they would, the candidates would meet a couple hours with you all as a second interview as a board. They'd do a school visit or an elementary, middle, and high school visit. They'd do a, a question and answer with, the, with your local media. They'd do question and answer with parents. They'd do question and answer with certain subsets of your, your community. I would assume they'd be part of that as the greater whole as well. Mm -hmm. But after receiving all that collective feedback from a day of interviewing, mm -hmm. we'd bring this data back to you as a Board of Education and say, okay, let, let's talk about it. Now, Mr. Mr. Solomon, would this group have been a part of coming from the 100, for the sake of an example, getting down to the top 10? They would have been involved in the vetting or the some preliminary. Preliminary, but certainly not the top 100. I think we would weed out the, the we the we get it down to about 30%. Okay. And then our goal would be, in every search that we do, our, our goal is for the board to see the top 9 to 12. Okay. So they would have been, my, my, this is my point, they would have been involved in, 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 in two other places, two places. After you get the, looking at the candidate pool, they are involved. That involvement, either you're going to give them um, uh, some kind of way to evaluate these candidates, and then when they come down to the final 10, they will be involved again. Is, am I correct in my uh, The Board of Education will select. I got that. I the, got that of the 9 to 12, the, the Board of Education will decide which candidates they want to interview for the superintendency. The board will then make a determination who the finalist or finalists are, and then put those candidates through an external process again to introduce them to the community and to the schools. I, I understand the end. What I'm trying to understand is the process. And what I want to be clear on is that this committee will also be involved with you your organization in vetting those candidates and determining who our 10 are. Top 9 to 12. 9 to 12. We will, we will bring, just, just drawing a number. We will, we will factor in their, their, their thoughts and feelings. So they'll come it, to the table twice. We, they will be invited to be part of the process in a couple different touch points, yeah. But the board will only be invited to the table at the end? Oh, no, no, no. The, the board will have two rounds of interviews, mm -hmm. the 9 to 12 and then finalists. Okay, I think I understand it. I think I do. I'm clear now. Thank you. And in a previous discussion, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Let me clarify one thing. The, the liaison committee will not have any authority Correct. in saying uh, we want three, these three candidates only or this, on, this one candidate only. They would have no authority in making that suggestion Correct. or a comment. 
Correct. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Dr. Irwin. And just to add to that, remember, we have to remember also that we do have two board members that will be part of the community liaison group as well. Right? All right. Any additional comments? I don't think we need to refresh what we're supposed to do today. What, we, what, we, what did you ask us today? Yeah. Conceptually, in spirit and design, would, does this represent uh, a process or a role for the liaison group that the board is comfortable with? And maybe I would phrase it this way. Um, is there any opposition? <laughs> to having this item as discussed by Mr. Solomon placed on the consent agenda for this evening. Is there, is there anything for us to formally vote on? Just for clarification. I think the model. Okay. He was talking about the model. The role of the liaison group. The role of the, that's the only thing we're addressing, the role of the liaison group. I just want to make sure that yeah. it's sort of, we're getting feedback from our social media formally. So I repeat, we, we've had, we have a recommendation from uh, Mr. Gary Solomon. Uh, can I get uh, a second? A second. A second by Mr. Jester. Uh, any ad additional discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor, uh, is the, all in favor, um, let me know by a show of hands. We, that we the we will accept the liaison group as he has described with the authority that he has described again so we no confusion uh, let's vote again <laughs> okay uh, we have uh, five and one Thank you very much, and uh, I hope everything works out for you. Uh, our prayers are with you.